Hello friends, this is Music Man from His Man Cave. Well, the last time we left them um, in Empire Strikes Back, uh, Han Solo was frozen in carbonite, and Luke and Leia just escaped and were standing looking at a galaxy. And so now, what happens next? Uh, what's gonna, what are they going to do now that Darth Vader's been coming for you? Right now. Hello friends, well it's been three years and now it's time for Re Revenge of the Jedi. Oops, let's take that poster down. Return of the Jedi. Because Jedis don't take revenge. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. Kind of witty. There were the first things that came out said Revenge of the Jedi. Uh, I was there in 1983, I was 13 years old, and then they changed it to Return of the Jedi. And so uh, we start right off with uh, uh, Jabba's palace. And uh, Jabba is, this is the first time we ever really see him. He's this big slug with green slime coming out of his mouth. He's disgusting. And he has these women dressed in scanty outfits dance for him. And if they don't like it, he hits a button and they fall into a pit. And we don't really know what's in that pit until... Here comes Luke Skywalker, because he wants his friend back. In the meantime, uh, uh, Leia comes in disguise to get uh, Han Solo back, and uh, she gets captured. And so here we have the makings of a good uh, uh, showdown between Jabba the Hutt and his homeboys, and and uh, Luke Skywalker and showing off his new Jedi powers because now he can just walk up and, <laughs> and <laughs> it's really good at it. I mean, and so, but he's wearing this black robe and it's like, has he turned to the dark side? Well, and I mean, uh, when uh, he's trying to negotiate with Jabba the Hutt and Jabba ain't going to negotiate, there's a point where he just turns and he says, and tries to take the gun and blast Jabba the Hutt. And, uh, and he hits the button, he falls into this pit, and he faces this creature that is huge, the Rancor. And, uh, of course, uh, Luke def defeats the Rancor, uh, but the funniest part to me is not Luke defeating the Rancor. It's that these people that work there see the Rancor as their, their sweet little pet, and so they're crying. <laughs> My, my baby. I mean, so so it just teaches you even things that are ugly deserve to be loved, and so that kind of gave me a a kick. I thought that was really funny. I thought that was really humorous. It's just little things like that. Those little touches in Star Wars that that make me giggle and, and with delight. That's when they do take time to do things like that. So they escape. Uh, Luke goes back to visit um, Yoda. And Yoda, it, it, he actually dies, and he tells him that there's another Skywalker. Surprise! We already knew that, those of us that were clever, because he called to Leia in Empire Strikes Back, and my dad guessed it, that, uh, yeah, Leia is somehow related to Luke. And, yeah, guess what? She is. She's his twin sister. And the spirit of Obi-Wan comes again and talks with Luke and says this patched-up story it's all from perspective. Uh, when your father turned evil, the man he was was destroyed. So what I said to you was true. Not really. Uh, well, I guess we have to kind of buy that. I guess that's supposed to be deep or something. Anyway, uh, this is where the whole showdown comes. The Emperor comes over and he's going to uh, like, uh, oversee the destruction of the Rebellion himself. Luke decides that he's going to turn himself into the, uh, into the Emperor. And in the me meantime, uh, they have to organize all these plans and separate again and kind of, you know, figures, figure out who's going to do what to bring down the Empire once and for all. And so, uh, Lando Calrissian, he takes on being a fighter pilot. Han Solo decides to go down to the planet after he's been freed by... Uh, uh, Luke Skywalker and and uh, at Jabba's palace and uh, and so uh, here we go with the uh, big showdown and and does uh, George Lucas and this deliver? He delivers. I mean, you have all these ships coming and turning and twisting and 
And then, uh, and, and is it, uh, and I love the conversation between Luke and Leia. Do you remember your mother? Not really, just feelings. Well, obviously, uh, Leia's power in the Force must be feelings or something. Uh, it, that's what it's tying into, because she remembers things that uh, Luke cannot remember. So she must have been able to somehow use the Force in the womb to sense how her mother was feeling, I guess. And so uh, they have this conversation, and Luke says, I'm going to go and try to turn my dad back to the good. And, uh, and so he does. And Han Solo comes out, and uh, Leia just wants him to hold her. And uh, everybody carries on about the Ewoks. Well, when I first watched it, I thought the Ewoks were quite funny. Um, I know they were originally supposed to be Wookiees. Uh, George Lucas himself said, if you watch all the special features, that they were supposed to be Wookiees. But uh, he, he would decide to go a different direction, and they're not Wookiees. Uh, he decided that they were going, uh, um, they're going to be uh, these Ewoks. And, uh, and, and people say it was a money grab. Well, everything in Star Wars was a money grab, if you remember. The R2-D2s and three C-3PO's and the Star Wars cases that you put all the action figures in. It's always been a money grab. So uh, my feelings on the Ewoks is uh, that they uh, are, are kid-friendly, they're funny. Uh, uh, I remember even myself laughing out loud when they were doing the swinging the thing, the throw the rocks, and then uh, one of the Ewoks was swinging it and swung it around his head and hit him on self, his, his own self in the head with a rock, if I said that right. Hit, hit his self in the head with a rock. It was funny. It made me laugh. And they, they, were, they were humorous. And... Uh, and uh, I'm sure, that I don't think the storm, I think people underestimate the Stormtroopers gear was not really designed for like mountainous or woody or what rocky terrain. Uh, it, those plastic outfits or if there was supposed to be some kind of special alloy or whatever would make you kind of clumsy and, and awkward trying to move around in that environment. Why didn't they have a jungle outfit? I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it comes down to, uh, and then uh, my favorite uh part is where Luke's having a conversation with his father and you can sense that his father's that conflict is going on. He takes him to the Emperor anyway and there's a showdown and uh and the the um Emperor just keeps taunting Luke. You and your friends will all die, my young apprentice. Uh, give in to your hate. And I mean, he's just taunting him. And he keeps saying, young apprentice, young apprentice, young apprentice. I'd turn and was like, shut up. I don't want to be on the dark side. Your dental plan is terrible. Your teeth look horrible. Anyway, um, so Luke finally says, well, I've had it with this. Like he has always been. He finally had enough. And he grabs his lightsaber and goes to strike Darth Vader. Now, they fix this in later releases, but I noticed that Darth Vader's lightsaber was on the inside, or was on the outside, and Luke's was on the inside. And they have fixed that. If you, only I would see it enough times to notice something like that and laugh at it and pause it and show my family and make them all laugh. Actually, it was Darth. Va it was Luke protecting the Emperor from Darth Vader. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but anyway, Luke is not uh, uh, wielding the lightsaber like in the Phantom Menace. He's just a slasher. He's just <laughs> and he's jumping around, and you're finally seeing that you know, uh, yeah, Jedi can jump around and jump about thirty feet into the air and all this, and and so uh, Luke uses his invisibility power. Um, I guess Jedi have this to make themselves invisible. Because uh, Darth is walking right around under the stairs, and there's nowhere that Luke couldn't be that he couldn't find him. And so, but he says the, the thing that he shouldn't have said. He says, um, if you won't turn to the dark side, perhaps his sister will. And uh, Luke says, never. He freaks out. He's not even using any good Jedi skills. He's just slashing. <laughs> and, and Darth Vader's like, oh, 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 oh. And he keeps, and he, and he, chops off his hand, and Luke's about to kill Darth Vader. I mean, you can see it. He's about to kill him, and you're thinking, he deserves it. He just ch choked all those men. He's a terrible man. Kill him. But the Emperor opens his big mouth. Yes, kill him, and fulfill your destiny. And Luke then kind of snaps out of it and realizes, I'm not doing what he wants me to do. I'm falling in the same trap my father fell into. So what Luke does is he uh, throws down his lightsaber, and then we see something we've never seen before. We didn't know that Siths could shoot bolts of lightning out of their hands. How are you supposed to defend against that? So yeah, the Emperor... And Luke is being toasty fried. 
And uh, and in the meantime, uh, they finally get the shield down with the help of the Ewoks. Yep, the Ewoks help save the day. Han Solo uses a little trickery, and they get in there, and they, they're blowing this thing. And, and then all the spaceships, this, all this is go happening just at the right moments. If it didn't all happen at the right moment, it wouldn't work. And they're flying inside the Death Yes, the Death Star is so wide open now, they can fly in it. Can you believe it? So they're flying inside the Death Star. And then... Uh, 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 Luke is being still being cooked by the Emperor. I don't know how long you can take a, being baked by lightning and survive. But Darth Vader looks at the Emperor, and he looks at Luke, and we know what's going to happen. We just know what's going to happen by his body language. He picks up the Emperor, and he throws him down this big shaft, and he explodes. And the Emperor's dead. And so he takes him, uh, he's dragging... Um, Darth Vader, or, or leading Darth Vader out, and he's trying to get Darth Vader out of the out of the place, and and so uh, you, you know at this point the 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 uh, Death Star, the new Death Star, starting to fall all apart and it's starting to blow up, and you're wondering if Luke and his dad are going to get off, but they take time to have a little fut son and father moment. He takes off his helmet and uh, and he says, I, "I'll die," and he says, "I know," uh, but he wants to see his face. He wants to see Luke's face with his own eyes. And he says that uh, you were right, and tell your sister you were right. So uh, then Luke takes Darth Vader down to the planet, and he burns him, and I guess in the Jedi way. I don't understand why Darth Vader didn't disappear. Somebody a little more deep into the Star Wars lore would have to explain that to me. But um, it's all happy, and uh, there's many different now takes on this. I like the original. Um, I, I like the one from this uh, this one right here, um, I like that take because that's the original one, and um, you can see I still have the original one that first came out on VHS, Return of the Jedi, and uh, and so there's a big celebration, and you see uh, these three people standing there in ghost form, and the third one you don't recognize. You're like, who is that? And then you go, that's Anakin. That that's Anakin. Oh, cool. Okay, and so it's a big celebration. I like that in the later versions they show that the the whole cities are all celebrating and they're all happy that uh, that they're free and they are allowed to do that because he made the, those prequels and so you can see now these other planets. But um, I give Return of the Jedi a nine out of ten, and um, the reason I don't give it a perfect score, a ten out of ten, is I just think that. Some of the things were just kind of left unexplained, and it'd have been nice if uh, the, if George Lucas would have kind of like helped us out with that instead of just uh, you know letting us say, well, why did that happen, and what what's going on here, and uh, I felt like, and I felt like uh, I, I now especially some of the prequels have kind of even opened up more questions that make you just go, okay, none of this really makes sense. But again, it's sci-fi logic out the window. Um, uh, 9 out of 10 for Return of the Jedi, and I, I still think it stands the test of time. It's a great one to watch with your family. The Ewoks are adorable, and those of you that are in your 40s and you still hate the Ewoks will get over it, because Jar Jar Binks is number one, and Ewoks are number two for the, the favorite characters in the Star Wars universe with children. Music Man signing off. Talk to you later.